Next time you're checking up on TMZ, reading about the bad boys and the loose ladies, don't think this is anything new. Silent screen star Barbara Lamar was a bad girl. When she was just in her early teens, she was an erotic dancer entertaining millionaires and politicians. By the time she was 14, she was dragged before a Hollywood judge on a morals charge who said if he ever saw her in her courtroom again, he'd throw the book at her. Within six months, there she was. He wanted to convict her of something, but he didn't want to destroy her record. He came up with the conviction of being too beautiful. He said she was too young and too beautiful to be left unprotected in the big city. Gossip columnist got a hold of the story, did a big double page spread of her in a local magazine, and she was on her way to Hollywood superstardom. Wealthy and handsome Arizona rancher Jack Lytell was husband number one. Young Barbara said he had pursued her relentlessly, finally catching up with her one day when she was on a horse. He threw her into the car, drove her to Mexico for some quickie south of the border wedding, took her back to the ranch. Barbara hated the cowboy life. They fought constantly. One night after a reported ruckus brawl, he ran out into the rain. <laughs> he died of pneumonia two days later. Then came husband number two. In 1914, rich and studly lawyer Lawrence Converse married his baby Barbara. In 24 hours, he was in jail on bigamy charges. You see, he was already married with three children. When asked by reporters why he would do such a thing, he replied, I just had to have her. When jailers refused to let him see his bride, he banged his head against the bars until he was unconscious. Later, he died of a blood clot on his brain. Husband number three was two-bit actor Phil Ainsworth. Barbara thought she had nabbed herself a big one. She hadn't. He bounced bad checks to fulfill her need for more and more bigger and brighter. Well, the cops caught up with him too. He ended up banging bars in San Quentin. Barbara said she'd wait for him. She divorced the poor fool while he was still in prison. Affairs ensued. One with writer Ernest Hemingway. In 1918, at the age of 22, she married husband number four, dance partner, lasted three years. In 1923, while filming, she turned her ankle and an onset doctor turned her onto morphine. An illegitimate child was born. Whoever was his father is anyone's guess. Heroin and husband number five, a guy named Jack came along. Things got tumultuous for Lamar. Cocaine, the big white lie in early Hollywood, became Lamar's toy. About this time, Barbara told the press that she never had more than two hours of sleep a day because, quote, she felt that life was too short to waste any of it sleeping, end quote. In 1926, the kidneys, tuberculosis, and all the trouble that bore down on poor Barbara made Barbie sleep forever. Cause of death, overdieting. The Hollywood euphemism for cocaine abuse. If you ever watch the 1965 Natalie Wood film, Inside Daisy Clover, take note of the beach house they blow up at the end of the film. That was Barbara Lamar's dream house. Bang! <laughs> to smithereens. That's classic Hollywood.